In April 1907, high-ranking Bolsheviks held a meeting in Berlin to discuss staging a robbery to obtain funds to purchase arms. The group decided that Stalin and an Armenian known as Kamo should organize a bank robbery in the city of Tiflis, Georgia. Stalin was experienced at organizing robberies, and these exploits had helped him gain a reputation as the party's principal financier. After the April meeting, Stalin and Litvinov traveled to Tiflis to inform Kamo of the plans and to organize the raid. Stalin had established contact with two individuals with inside information about the state bank's operations, giving him access to a secret schedule that showed the times that cash would be transferred by stagecoach. Also, the informant notified Stalin that the bank would be receiving a large shipment of money by horse-drawn carriage on June 26, 1907. Kresin helped manufacture bombs to use in the attack, and only weeks before the robbery, Kamo accidentally detonated one of the bombs while trying to set the fuse. The blast severely injured him in the eye. Kamo was confined to his bed for a month owing to intense pain, and had not fully recovered by the time of the robbery. June 26, 1907, the 20 organizers, including Stalin, met near Irvansky Square, just two minutes from the bank, to finalize their plan. After the meeting, they went to their designated places in preparation for the attack. The Russian authorities had become aware that a large action was being planned by revolutionaries in Tiflis and had increased the security presence in the main square. They had been tipped off, and lookouts were posted on nearby roofs. The gang members mostly dressed themselves as peasants and waited on street corners with revolvers and grenades in their pockets. In contrast to the others, Kamo was disguised as a cavalry captain and came to the square in a horse-drawn carriage. The other conspirators were waiting in a tavern when they received a signal that the bank stagecoach was nearing the location. They quickly left the building with pistols drawn. The Tiflis branch of the State Bank of the Russian Empire had arranged to transport funds from the post office to the bank. Inside the stagecoach which was the money. Two guards with rifles, a bank cashier, and a bank accountant. A carriage filled with armed soldiers rode behind the stagecoach, surrounded by mounted Cossacks. Once the final signal was given, robbers pulled the fuses on their grenades and threw them at the carriage. The resulting explosions killed horses and guards, the robbers then began shooting at the various security men. The Georgian newspaper Zari reported, The blasts were so strong that they knocked over nearby chimneys and broke every pane of glass for a mile around. Though the explosions had killed many of the guards, one of the horses harnessed to the stagecoach was injured, but still alive. The bleeding animal bolted from the scene, pulling the stagecoach with it. Two of the robbers chased after the money-laden carriage. After it was stopped, Kamo raced over to it, firing his pistol as he drove. Once he got there, the other robbers helped throw the money into the carriage. After securing the money, Kamo quickly rode out of the square, encountering a police carriage coming in from the opposite direction. He pretended to be a captain of the cavalry, shouting, The money is safe. Run to the square. The deputy in the carriage obeyed realizing only later that he had been fooled by an escaping robber. Camo then rode to the gang's headquarters nearby, where he changed out of his uniform. All of the robbers quickly scattered, and none were caught in the act. Fifty casualties lay wounded in the square, along with the dead people and horses. The authorities stated that only three people had died, but documents in the Okrana archives revealed that the true number was around forty. The state bank was not sure how much it actually lost, but the best estimates were around 341,000 rubles, worth around 3.4 million US dollars today. About 91,000 rubles were in small, untraceable bills, but the rest were in large 500 ruble notes that were difficult to exchange because their serial numbers were known to the police. Stalin's exact actions on the day of the robbery are unknown and disputed. Kamo later stated that Stalin took no active part in the robbery and had watched it from a distance. Another source stated in a police report that, that Stalin observed the ruthless bloodshed, smoking a cigarette from the courtyard of a mansion. Authorities mobilized the army, closed roads and surrounded the square, hoping to secure the money and capture the criminals. A special detective unit was brought in to lead the police investigation. 
Unfortunately for the investigators, witness testimony was confusing and conflicting, and the authorities did not know which group was responsible. Polish socialists, Armenians, anarchists, socialist revolutionaries, and even the Russian state itself was blamed. A large portion of the stolen money was eventually moved by Kamo, who took the money to Lenin in Finland, which was then part of the Russian Empire. Kamo spent the remaining summer months staying with Lenin at his dacha. That autumn, Kamo traveled to Belgium to buy arms and ammunition, and then to Bulgaria to buy 200 detonators. He next traveled to Berlin and delivered a letter from Lenin to a prominent Bolshevik physician, Yakov Sitomirsky, asking him to treat Kamo's eye, which had not completely healed from the bomb blast. Unknown to Lenin or Kamo, Sitomirsky had been secretly working as an agent of the Russian government and quickly informed the Okrana, who asked the Berlin police to arrest Kamo. When they did so, they found a forged Austrian passport and a suitcase with the detonators, which he was planning to use in another large bank robbery. After being arrested in Berlin, Kamo received a note from Krasin through his lawyer Oskar Kahn telling Kamo to feign insanity so that he would be declared unfit to stand trial. To demonstrate his insanity, Kamo refused food, tore his clothes, tore out his hair, attempted suicide by hanging himself, slashed his wrists, and ate his own excrement. German doctors stuck pins under his nails, struck him in the back with a long needle, and burned him with hot irons, but he did not break his act. After all of these tests, the chief doctor of the Berlin Asylum wrote in June 1909 that there is no foundation to the belief that Kano is feigning insanity. He is without doubt mentally ill, is incapable of appearing before a court or of serving sentence. It is extremely doubtful that he can completely recover. In 1909, Kamo was extradited to a Russian prison where he continued to feign insanity. Then finally, in April 1910, Kamo was tried for his role in the Tiflis robbery. At trial, Kamo continued to act insane by ignoring the proceedings and instead openly feeding a pet bird that he had snuck into the courtroom. The trial was suspended while officials examined Kamo's sanity once again. The court eventually found that he was sane when he committed the Tiffany's robbery, but was currently mentally ill and should be confined until he recovered. In August 1911, after feigning insanity for more than three years, Camo escaped from the psychiatric ward of the prison by sawing through the bars on his cell window and climbing down a homemade rope. After escaping, Camo eventually met up with Krasin, his longtime partner in crime and fellow communist, and they fiendishly began to plan another armed robbery. Again, he was caught before the robbery took place and was put on trial in Tiflis for his exploits, including for the original bank robbery. This time, while imprisoned, Kamo did not feign insanity and was given four death sentences, seemingly doomed to death. Kamo then had a stoke of good luck along with other prisoners. His sentence was commuted to a long prison term as part of the celebrations for the Romanov dynasty tricentennial. Then Kamo was released from prison after the February Revolution in 1917. A total of three amnesties were enacted by Russian Minister of Justice, Alexander Kerensky, in 1917. According to some historians, about 90,000 political prisoners were released. After the wars were over, Kamo worked in the Soviet Customs Office by some accounts because he was too unstable to work for the secret police. Kamo died in a 1922 road accident when a truck hit him while he was cycling. Although there is no proof of foul play, some have theorized that Stalin ordered his death to keep him quiet.